Good morning. It is, I think some of you are as nervous as I am, so. Um, but I was thinking about this yesterday, and the, with the sermon title, we are called to speak truth and to speak it boldly. And um, that is the sermon title tonight, or this, this afternoon, the, the boldness of speaking truth. Um, I do have an opening statement. Um, I'm humbled by the opportunity given. Um, it is a humbling experience to be here before you this morning. I'm thankful for all my family, friends, and brothers and sisters in Christ who have shown your support uh, through all the ordination process and everything. And I pray this morning that we are here to hear the truth of God's word and not any one person. Um, may all the honor and glory go to God, for he alone is worthy. Um, I am just a vessel. I am just in flesh, but I am honored to be used by him this morning. Um, you can turn to Acts 5. That's where the morning message is coming from. Um, I'll be starting at verse 12. But I wanted to open up with a story about truth, about a little boy who told the truth. Because little boys on a baseball team always are rooting for their team. And sometimes the truth gets stretched. So I wanted to open up with a story about truth. This was a national story back in 1989. Some of you weren't born then, but that's all right. Um, 1989, his, the baseball player's name was Tanner Muncy. He was seven years old. Now this is a young, young man. Um, at a t-ball game in Wellington, Florida, the first baseman, Tanner Muncy, fielded a ground ball and tried to tag a runner going first base to second base. The umpire called the runner out, but Tanner immediately approached the umpire and said, I did not tag the runner. The umpire awarded the runner second base, and Tanner's coach gave him the game ball for his honesty. In, the game, in a game two weeks later, with the same umpire on the field, and Tanner playing shortstop this time, a similar play occurred. This time, the umpire thought that Tanner had missed a tag on a runner going to third base and called the runner safe. Tanner glanced at the umpire and, without saying a word, flipped the ball to the catcher and returned to his position. The umpire, sensing something was wrong, asked, did you tag the runner? The umpire asked Tanner. Yes, he replied. The umpire then called the runner out. The opposing coaches protested until the umpire explained what had happened two weeks earlier. earlier. If a child is that honest in speaking the truth, I have to give it to him. So my aim is if a seven-year-old speaking truth and it matters, how much will it matter when he is older in life? Um, so today's lesson, today's sermon, um, speaking truth and the boldness of speaking truth. Um, we live in a society where truth doesn't matter anymore. Uh, we live in a society where um, God's word doesn't seem like it matters anymore. Um, so let's read Acts 5. We'll be starting at verse 12 and actually going to the end of the chapter. And I have three points here this morning, those of you who are taking notes. Um, Acts 5, starting at verse 12. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were with all, with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest, there's no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women insomuch that they brought forth the sick unto the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least they, the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the streets round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands <clears throat> on the apostles, and put them in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors, and brought them forth, and said, Go, stand in the temple to the people of... Go, stand, and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning, and taught... But the high priest came, and they that were with him, and called the council together, and all the senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. <clears throat> but when the officers came, and found them not in the prison, they returned, 
and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut with all safety, and the keeper standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the man whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. Then God of our, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel, and took counsel to slay them. Then stood... Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, and in reputation among all the people, and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space, and said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Thetis, boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who was slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. And this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of taxing, and drew away much people after him. He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work of men be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. <clears throat> and daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Um, just prior to this, the church had gone through a cleansing. They, uh, Ananias and Sapphira had brought sin in the church by not speaking truth. Um, they had said that they had sold property and they kept some of the money back and the church needed cleansing. And through that cleansing, <clears throat> the church was alive. The church spoke truth. The church was on fire for the Lord. Um, so, in, if, again, if you're keeping notes, the point number one is we must know what truth is. Um, the Sunday School lesson this morning went perfect with, with the sermon. I mean, if we don't know what truth is, how do we share it? Um, Peter and the apostles knew the resurrection, they followed Jesus Christ, and they wanted to share what truth was. <clears throat> Acts chapter 4, verse 33, it says, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Um, I imagine myself being with Peter and the apostles and just seeing what Christ did, seeing it in real life. And then to be able to go and to share with others what Christ had done, um, to speak truth, no matter what, the Pharisees and the leaders of the church were saying. Um, so they fully understood what Christ had done for them and wanted to proclaim the gospel to all who would receive it. Uh, they were not afraid of man or what men would do to them because they had God on their side. So we look at society today and truth doesn't matter. Scripture doesn't matter. They cast it aside. So the challenge is to know truth. Um, John 10.10, 10, it says, The thief cometh not to steal, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and, that, that, and they might have it more abundantly. Um, 
we think of newness of life. We think of the resurrection. Without the resurrection, we can't have newness of life. Um, and through that resurrection, um, John 10.10, 10, there's a thief out there. And he is, he's destroying quite well. But it is our job as believers to stand up to that, to speak truth, um, to show others, you know what, this lifestyle that we live, this, this life that we live, it's, it's different because we have God's word is our foundation to stand on. <clears throat> Romans 8, verses 9 to 11, it says, You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. Um, in Peter and the Apostles, in, in Acts chapter 5, um, they had the Holy Spirit on their side. Imagine, well, look at society today and we have uh, the world against us. We go out and we speak truth. We say, you know what, this is God's word and society throws it away. We're no different than Peter and the apostles and the Pharisees and those are going against scripture, going against God's word. Um, so, the truth is, Jesus Christ died for our sins. The, the apostles in Acts chapter 4, uh, verse 2, 30, 32 and 33, uh, they saw it. They saw what Christ had done on earth, and they wanted to share it. Um, so the question is, why are we here? Why are we here as believers? What do we want to learn? What do we want to do? Do we want to know truth? Um, truth that word is loosely thrown out in society nowadays and it does not hold water. The only truth that we have is God's word. Um, and looking at Acts chapter 5 and what the apostles, or Peter and the apostles did to share truth, um, if we were put in their shoes, what would we do? What would we do? Somebody comes to us, no, you can't say that, that's not politically correct. Do we still share truth? The truth of the gospel does not change. Scripture is our truth. Jesus Christ's blood and what he did on Calvary is our foundation. Um, society is quickly throwing away everything that we stand for. You look at some of the um, legislation that passed the House this week, the Equality Act. It would actually fine and jail Christian leaders for speaking truth if it passed the Senate. Would you stand up and speak truth? <clears throat> Point number two, the truth hurts. Truth hurts. The truth hurts our feelings. The truth hurts our pride because we need to admit we are wrong. There was a truck in the shop uh, five, six years ago now, but I remember his name. I do not remember the color of his truck. It was James, his na name was James Cross, and I scratched his truck. Oh, it's like, this is the end. I can't do it. I gotta confront a customer and tell him I scratched his truck. Never did that before, never did it again. We pulled him aside after the truck was done and pulled him outside and said, hey, uh, I scratched your truck. I showed him it's just a small little scratch. And he said, oh, don't worry about it. Oh, relief. All we need to do is feel, speak the truth. It eases our spirit. It eases our mind. We are called to speak truth. Now he had other issues with his truck and he hasn't been back since, but that's... Um, the truth hurts our relationships with others. Um, you look in Acts 5 here and what happened to Ananias and Sapphira and why, what happened to them when they did not speak truth. It was devastating. It was life-altering. It literally ended their life because they didn't speak truth. Um, so... We speak truth to friends. We speak truth to neighbors. We speak truth to brothers and sisters in the church. 
and it hurts. It hurts a relationship sometimes. <clears throat> the truth hurts us physically. In verse 18, in Acts 5, it says, And they laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. Now, when they laid their hands on them, I'm sure they didn't just put their arm around them. Let's go to the prison. We're going to have a cup of tea and some toast, and you'll be fine. They didn't do that back then. They physically grabbed them. They threw them in jail, and that's where they stayed. <clears throat> also in verse 40, it says, And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. So we look at today. And we, we go out and we speak truth to others. We speak truth to life because we have God's word as our foundation. Um, we're not beaten. We're not um, cast in prison. We're not um, criticized. Well, yes, we are. Um, so we, uh, we don't have it as rough as they did back then. I was looking at a Voice of the Martyrs yesterday and the... There's a story about a gentleman in Africa who wanted to save some believers. There was some Islamic extremists coming in, and um, they were shooting them. They wiped out the whole village. And this gentleman had lost an eye, lost his vision in that, but he wanted to protect his family. He wanted to protect his believers. Um, without a body of believers, without truth, what do we have? Um, and it was just... What Peter and the apostles went through here in chapter 5 in wanting to proclaim God's truth. Um, it's an amazing story. <clears throat> through them speaking truth, if you look at verse 12, many signs and wonders were wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch, and the rest durst no man join himself to them by the people, but the people magnified them. Verse 14, and believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both men and women. Um, when truth is spoken, the church grows. When truth is spoken, the body of believers grows. Um, when truth is spoken, friendships do grow. It does take time, but friendships do grow. Um, the truth hurts in church sometimes as well. Because we are human. We don't always want to hear it. Because, again, we're human. Second Chronicles 7, verse 14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will, for, and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now, I wonder where the church in America is at right now. Where's Blandon at right now? Where's Berks County at right now? Um, is the church fractured? Because truth is such... Is still under attack. Um, is the truth matter in the church? I wholeheartedly believe it does. Um, the truth causes fear in those that deny it. Verses 38 and 39. And now I say unto you, brethren, refrain from these men and let them alone, for if the counsel of or this or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But, it be, but if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest happily ye be found even to fight against God. When God is in the forefront of our truth, it doesn't matter who is against us. These men feared God. They feared his wrath. They feared what had happened in the past, and they didn't want it to happen to them because they, some inclination, God had to be on their side. Peter's and the apostles' side. Um, so, <clears throat> I, I generally, as a man, do not like to admit I'm wrong. That's just the way we are. Um, if somebody comes to me and says, you know what, you need to change this because it's not truth. It's not in God's, God's word. It's not in scripture. Am I apt to change my way? Or do I build up a wall and say, you know what, I don't want to hear your truth because doesn't apply to my life. Scripture applies to all of our lives. It does. I told my children years ago, well, speak truth even if it gets you in trouble. That applies to each and every one of us. Speak truth 
even if it gets you in trouble. Speak truth from Scripture, even if it gets you in trouble. Um, the truth is not something that is wanted anymore in society. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 1, verse 27 says, But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. We try to rationalize and understand why God does what he does when all he wants is, to, well, all he wants is us to focus on him. Um, speaking with customers, customers in the shop, um, sometimes we get on the topic of academia. And the smarter you are, we lose sight of truth. Just basic, basic truth. I'm not saying we, we don't learn. We all need to learn. But we lose sight of truth. <clears throat> Do you think Peter and the apostles cared what anybody else thought? They wanted to go out. They were commanded to go out and preach and teach what Christ had done for them. They were led by the Holy Spirit. They had God on their side. So where am I? I heard this quote this week. The reason we don't always speak and live truth is because we are afraid of man, of dealing with the wrath of man, which is usually quick and painful. The consequences of dealing with God in our earthly minds is a lot farther down the road. Does that make sense? We are afraid of man because the consequences are here and now. But we're quicker to put God to the side because the consequences are far down. We don't need to worry about that. That's eons. No one is more hated than those who speak the truth. The truth matters in society. The truth matters now just as it did in Peter and the Apostles' time. <clears throat> George Orwell, an English novelist, said, the further a society drifts from the truth, the more it will be hated, the more it will hate those who speak it. And we look at where the Christian church is today. We look at where the church is looked at today because we base our belief on Scripture. Does society love us or hate us? And are we enjoying it? Are we at peace about it? Society hates everything in this book. It does not line up with their beliefs. It does not line up with their standards. <clears throat> I am grateful for it. Um, so, also, The church in America, church in Blandon, is question. We question this. The church in America, is it getting watered down because we are afraid to hurt people's feelings? I have mentioned this in the youth class. I've mentioned it to the youth on trips. My faith in Jesus Christ is not a feeling. It's a transforming way of life. I mentioned in, this, in the Sunday school class this morning, Jesus Christ and through his blood in us is transforming. That is why we want to know truth and to, to preach it and to teach it. Um, we need people who are bold um, to stand up and say, you know what, that is not right because that does not like what scripture. Peter and the apostles, they, uh, they did not care. They did not waver. They spoke truth. Um, <clears throat> the, the angel of the Lord came to them after they were gently thrown in jail, and he did what? He got them out. He said, you go and you preach and you teach in Solomon's temple in the morning. And what did they do? They ran. Oh, no, no, they didn't run. They went to the temple, and they preached and they teach in the morning. And what happened? The leaders came and they wagged their finger at him. No, 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 no. We told you not to preach and to teach. So where are we at this morning? The question, am I 
speaking truth. So I, again, we are all vessels. We are all called to serve God. We are all called to speak truth because of what Christ has done in us. Um, and you look at the, uh, Paul and the apostles here, and that church setting, if, if you look up Solomon's porch, it's a couple pillars, well, a couple, there's quite a few. It's just like a concrete stone pad. And just imagine the sunset behind it, and they're just there having church. They're there having worship time. They're there preaching and teaching. Um, that's, that's the church. Um, point number three is the truth will set you free each and every time. <clears throat> Acts 5, verses 12 to 14. It says, And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were with, all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Again, a nice setting. And of the rest, there's no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. And believers were more, the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women. When truth is spoken, the kingdom of God grows. And when the kingdom of God grows, it gets stronger. If we had three or four of us here this morning, is the church strong? Yes. If we had 150 people here this morning, is the church strong? Yes. When truth is spoken, the church grows and God is glorified. <clears throat> John 8 Verses 31 and 32, it says, Then Jesus said unto those Jews who, be who believed on him, If you continue in my word, then ye are my disciples, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth sa shall set you free. Um, in talking to customers on the phone about their vehicles, um, it's always fun. It's always fun. There are those who are, yep, fix it. I believe you. I trust you. I want to know what is wrong with my car so I know what to see down the road. They, they, they trust us. They, they trust that we are telling them the, the truth. Um, and there are those who the truck frame could be about rusted in half and they would doubt you because they don't trust us. So my, my prayer as, as a believer, it should be each one of our prayer, that when we are coming in contact with those around us that we are telling them the truth. We are speaking truth. Think of the little boy, seven years old. I don't, I'd have to do math. Think of how old he is now, but do you think he's speaking truth now? The little boy, seven years old, knows how to tell the truth at a little league game. When most little boys, they worry about their team. I pray that we are speaking truth. Um... <clears throat> First John 3, verse 18 says, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Um, when, when we are living our life, we are living our life by God's standards. We should be. And in coming in contact with those around us, we are living a lifestyle. We are dressed differently. We different actions different mannerisms. There is something inside us, hopefully a joy that others see. 1 John 3.18, it says, but in deed and in truth. It's, it's something that, it's an outward showing of what Christ has done inside of us. And to have that, we need to have that foundation. We need to have Christ as our foundation. Um, going back to um, sharing about how we sell stuff, we are all salesmen, saleswomen. We all sell. Whether you think you're a seller or not, we all sell. Um, in order to speak truth, I have to believe in the product. At the shop, say, hey, you need this for inspection. I have to believe that you know what, this is needed for your vehicle. So in, in the Christian walk, I have to tell you know what, this is needed for salvation. This is needed for, to have that walk. So in order to sell it, I have to believe it. If we don't believe it, then what are we here for? 
I've had so many phone calls about my extended car warranty, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Because it's false. It's not true. But if Christ is living in us, then the fruit is there and others will believe it because that the outward showing of what Christ has done. If there's no fruit, no evidence of Christ in me, are people going to believe it? Ah, you're just another one of those you know, hypocrites, bench warmers, whatever. You're fine. world's full of them. Where am I at? Am I actually living truth? Am I actually showing others, you know what? This is what Christ has done in my life. Peter and the apostles lived it. They preached it. They followed God each and every day. They wanted to do it. Um, they wanted to share with others, no matter the con consequences or the pain. <clears throat> James 1, verse 17 and 18 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning, of his own will begat us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creature. We need to know truth. It needs to be evident in us, the way those we come in contact with see it. The apostles lived it. Peter and the apostles lived it. They showed others. Others wanted to hear it. That's evidence. How did Peter and the apostles react after getting beaten? I look at this and I, I, I think of my own life and could I do what they did? They got thrown in jail. They got their finger wagged at them because you're not supposed to preach truth and they, they got beaten. Three different things. And I think to myself, would I be able to withstand what man wants to do? Time coming, I believe, where the church is going to be persecuted. And we need to know what truth is. And we need to live it. Um, Am I ashamed of the gospel? I, I pray not. Uh, Acts 5, verses 41 and 42, it says, And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach about Jesus Christ. Do I count it a blessing when somebody says, Bah, you're just one of those Sunday morning Christians who doesn't really live out their faith? I've heard that. I've been told that the truth that you are following after is not truth. That hurts. It hurts in here. But people can say whatever they want. People can do whatever they want. People can hit. People can physically beat like they did Peter and the apostles. But yet they still preached and they still teached. They actually counted it a joy. Do I count it a joy? There's sometimes, personally, I, I get so frustrated because I'm a believer. This shouldn't happen to me. We're not supposed to be whipped. But we should count it joy because we serve an almighty God who gives us the strength to carry on each and every day. <clears throat> In spite of threats from man or physical for physical, emotional, psychological, and even spiritual harm, we must remain steadfast to what God has done for us through His Son, Jesus Christ. We must remain steadfast in speaking truth no matter the consequences. No matter what society, the media, those in government, or even those in our own church say, if it contradicts Scripture and God's truth. Because in the end, when our time on earth is over, all we have is God's truth to stand on, and that is why truth matters in our life today. I pray that we live our life like Jesus, example, like Peter and the apostles, and we stand on truth no matter where it leads, because truth is under attack. We need to know what truth is, the truth of God's word, and we need to live it each and every day. Um, so truth does matter in each of our lives. I thank God for the, for the book he gave us, for the stories, the true stories that he gave us to learn and to live from. We look at 
I started reading that chapter and I was like, there's, there's five different sermons in there. I don't know which, where to go. Do that down the road. But there is truth in Acts chapter 5 because the apostles and Peter and the believers of that church knew truth and they wanted to know more of it. So I pray that is our prayer here this morning at Blandon. Uh, I pray that, that as we, we go forth from this house in our daily lives that we search truth and we, we want to know it. Um, don't shy away from it um, because the truth will set you free. Let's pray. God, I thank you again for your word. Thank you that we have your word as our foundation, as truth to live our life out, that we don't need to be afraid of man or anybody else, what they have in society to say about us. We have comfort in your word because it is true. We have strength in your word because it is true. And we can live out your word because it is true, because we've been changed by your blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you for each one who's here today. Uh, bless your time and our fellowship the remainder, the remainder of the day. And I just thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen.